Hey everybody, welcome back to Recordology. All right, it's getting exciting now because we are only two days away from Christmas. Today is the 23rd of December, Vlogmas Day 23. It seems like six months ago that we started Vlogmas. Um, it's been a blast. It's been an absolute blast. Just two more episodes to go, today's and tomorrow's. And I encourage you to watch tomorrow's because we're going to be talking about what is next on this channel, not just through the holidays, but into the new year, what the plans are. Now they are somewhat nebulous, they can change, but at this moment there is a plan of action. I want to discuss that with you. But today we are going to be taking apart in a destructive teardown an old 90s stereo system and really see what the components are, what it's made by, who it's made by, all kinds of fun stuff. You're not going to want to miss this. What in the world is a destructive teardown anyway? Well, destructive teardown is one where you take it apart, but you're not really ever intending on putting it back together again. So you're less gentle. You're breaking things if you need to. Mostly you just want to see how it was made without any intent on fixing it. Why would I do that? I picked this up for like 10 bucks last year at a thrift store. We did a review on it. Um, I, well, the main point of the review was the phono input I was mentioning was a built-in preamp and that you can sometimes use stereos with built-in preamps instead of buying an external one if you're hooking up a vintage uh, turntable, which is true. However, this particular one ended up being designed for a ceramic, therefore line level uh, turntable that were popular in the 80s, early 90s. And were sort of the predecessor to the cheap entry level turntables that we have around today. Anyway, besides that, it was a fairly unremarkable piece of kit and um, maybe worth five or ten bucks right now. So rather than either throw it away or even donate it, I thought we would tear it apart, see what's inside. Now, this was sort of a thing. This is a perceived value strategy where it's designed to make it look like more than it really is. As you can see, it looks like we have separates as some people call it but component level things we've got a cd player component down here we've got a tape deck here we've got eq and we've got a tuner it looks like a stacked unit of equipment separated but if you look carefully you'll see wait a minute it doesn't look like it's truly separated and you would be right because it's just one box it's just this is very very popular way to make something look like it was more than it really was this is simply a plastic plate that is designed to look like a bunch of separates, but it is in fact just one unit. Masonite back panel, jacks, antenna, everything you would need. Nothing really wrong with it per se, it's just very entry level. Casio audio equipment, it's just, it's okay. You know what I mean? It's not terrible. It was calculators and keyboards were kind of their mainstay. Usually in my experience, my experience, when a company strays from what they're known for, usually the results aren't as good as the products that they were known for. So not to say that Casio couldn't make a good stereo, but I'm just guessing that they probably did better with uh, calculators and keyboards. Let's go ahead and start by taking this panel off. You've already guessed that there aren't separate components to look at, but all of those functions do exist. It does have a dual well tape deck. It does have a CD player, all of that good stuff. So. All right, let me go ahead and finish removing these screws and we'll take a gander inside. All right, by the way, I'm using my trusty Stanley Phillips screwdriver today. I believe this is the same one I inherited from my dad. I have good memories of tools that look like this. Speaking of which, I really need to invest in my tool game. I've got a lot of hand-me-downs, as you can see here, which work fine, but I need a new toolbox too. I should have asked Santa for that. Okay, uh, pulling this open, Masonite front panel coming off. Okay, something's hanging up here. It doesn't wanna, doesn't wanna come off. What do we, what's the holdup? So we've got some things holding up the works back here. And I think these ones will just pop off. Oh, those are good. Something you would never normally do, of course power cord oftentimes these power cords are tied in a knot behind here so they don't get yanked this one is not it's just a pass-through 
But what in the world? This is okay. So this is interesting. So this is the grounding wire for the turntable, and look how they've got it turned around. You think that's? Is there a functional reason? You tell me that it's threaded around the power cord, or is it just to take up slack? On the other side of this is is this. It's the grounding wire for the phonograph. Huh, interesting. All right, I'm going to go ahead and clip those off. Dusty wire cutters in here to finish off things quickly. And all this stuff snaps off for easy. This should come off easy. Even the power cord should be an easy snip. Yeah, and that is that. Back look at the Masonite panel. Man, this reminds me of uh, peg tool pegboards in the garage. Do you remember that? Sort of this like fuzzy textured board material. And that is the reverse side of that back panel. I guess I'll go ahead and clip it off this side too. No reason not to. And yeah. Casio made in 1993, October of 93. Okay, this is, I'm kind of surprised here. So it's framed like the chassis itself is made out of plywood. You can see the different layers right there. Uh, instead of just a particle board material, it looks like we have like a painted masonite, uh, I guess you would call that a body material, which has sort of this, I call this like a knurled texture outside it's a laminate i mean it's some sort of lamp probably like a plastic laminate but it's framed really nicely pretty rugged actually all right let's look at the big reveal of the back side okay there is the back side it looks like a box of spaghetti a lot of wires and yeah really really interesting we got some things to look at up there we've got a piece of shielding at the top there and underneath that is the am ferrite rod antenna pcb here we've got the cassette decks there one motor you'll see in the middle there driving everything no huge surprise there even my nice iowa shelf system had a single motor driving both decks which was amazing that they could do that it's actually fairly impressive engineering and then we've got the cd player down here there's actually a disc in there i don't know if you guys can see that but there is a white disc with red writing on it i don't know if i left that in there probably did i'm sure we would have tested that but that's it. It's pretty much a box. It certainly is not a bunch of separates. It is one box full of stuff. And we've got brown PCBs and even a green PCB in the back there. So let's dig into it a little deeper. Okay, so this faceplate has three screws on each side, which I removed. Thought we would see if we can pop it off. Oh, I may need to, some screws. From, yeah, there's one more on the bottom here. So, okay. I thought I was going to be ready to pull it off. Not quite. Sometimes you'll find these screws hiding on a, either a top lip or a bottom lip like this. Now we should be ready. And let's see what happens. This box, try to get the guts out of the box. And there it goes. <laughs> it just sort of broke away, fell off the back. Well, we can definitely uh, see everything easily now. So let's uh, take a closer look at what we got. So there's this shield right here. It's like a kind of a metal surface on that side, but it's paper. Actually, I think it's a plastic. So it's guarding this uh, chip. Let's see what the chip says. So that's a Toshiba chip. Interesting. Not 100% sure what that is. It's on the back side of of the radio so i'm assuming it has it's either a logic some sort of controlled some sort of control or something i'm not 100 percent sure but it doesn't surprise me to find parts by other companies usually when a quote off brand would do something that wasn't in their wheelhouse something that was a stretch for them they would partner with other companies just like apple an iPhone is made up of all sorts of companies' parts. iPhones have Sony cameras. They've got LG screens. I think the, the processors are made by Samsung, which is even a competitor, and that's a weird thing. Imagine the non-compete agreement involved in Apple and uh, Samsung making chips for devices that they actually compete on. So that's a, that's a strange thought. All right, I'm going to keep removing the screws from this circuit board, and we'll see what we got. Do you guys like these types of videos? I, I love to see how stuff works and what's inside things. And so I would watch this, so I'm hoping that means you would too. 
So there is the uh, liquid crystal display for the tuner. Interesting sort of brown coloration there. And I'm going to clip off some of these wires back here so we can rotate this a little easier. A dull spot on my clippers in the back, so I got to get it near the front. And I got a whole braid of things going on here. Yeah. Yeah, this thing won't be working again. That's okay. We're learning from it. We're learning from it. And I remember from the review, it was pretty well loved, pretty well used anyway. So there is the EQ. And it was, again, this is a perceived value, meaning that they're trying to make it look like something it's not to a degree. It's a three band equalizer, high, medium, and low, or bass, treble, and mid. But they put two slider things on each one to make it look like it's six. So you're like, wow, it's got a six band EQ. No, it's got a three band EQ that's made to look like a six band EQ. I don't like that kind of stuff. And then we had another slider over here. I forget what this one was. It might be a balance, a left and right. There is a look underneath. Wow, look at those pins. They reach all the way up there. And then they uh, extend down all the way to the board. These are pretty well dusty. These are buttons. Little surface mounted buttons there. Some of them have a nice click. Some of them are just muddy. At this point, we've got some glue that's yellowing, holding things together there. This was production number 28, maybe, on that day. Yeah, look at this. And maybe, you know what? I don't know. Do people salvage, like, capacitors and resistors and stuff? You know, I'm sure there's things on here that are salvageable. Okay, these are neat. These are, like, mechanical switches. Pretty cool. Pretty colorful. There's some pots there. Very cool stuff. Look at the bottom side there. There's that Toshiba chip again. Let's look at the board itself. Opal. Rev 2. See all the traces down there? Interesting. At least I think this is interesting. I think it's kind of cool. And that reveals the back there where the buttons or the switches stuck through and the sliders and these right here are the where those buttons would be pressed up against here so what you're actually clicking on for like these radio presets are just pieces of plastic that extend an inch and a half back to the circuit board itself where they actually clicked down on the um onto the circuit board and then we've got switches here these are switches this was another fairly common practice higher end stereos would have knobs but it was cheaper to make a switch so rather than have a volume knob they'd make a round looking thing that looked from a distance like it might be a volume knob but it's really a switch for volume that's cheap same thing with the tuning dial is really a up and down yeah definitely this was a value brand this was a value brand here's some more switches in action there should call those plunger switches. And now I'm going to take the screws off for the next circuit board, and we'll look at that one. Okay, I've got this one clipped and ready to pull out. Okay, almost ready to pull out. Let's go ahead and snip that. I think we're ready to go. You can see this was the uh, switching mechanism to switch inputs. Spring-loaded switches there. Everything's got to get onto a, a circuit board. Everything's got to get onto a circuit board. So even though the device may look like it's, you know, got switches and things everywhere, everything is truly routed to the nearest board available. Another chip, I don't recognize anything on that. Here's another plunger switch of sorts. Very, very, very fun to check out. There's another Toshiba chip. So I wonder if this whole thing was made by Toshiba. It's hard to say. There is the bottom, some different traces there. So there you go, that's that. We got one more board to go, so I'm gonna go ahead and start removing that one. Now this is the board right above the compact disc player. I'll be curious to see what we learn from that because I guarantee you Casio did not make their own compact disc players. There's a Mitsubishi chip. Interesting. I've probably said interesting 5,000 times on this video, but it's interesting. There's a Sony chip. Wow, look, there's some shorts on the board there. 
There's another Sony chip. Another Sony. So I'm guessing Sony made the CD player. But you didn't expect that. So yeah, really interesting. That is apparently a Sony CD player. So the CD player itself probably wasn't half bad. Look at this monstrosity of a tangled knot. Just kind of get out of the way there. Yeah, this disc. I don't know. Is that? I don't think that's mine. No, I'm pretty sure that's not mine, actually. Okay, so there's another board down here. I think it's a power module, mostly because it's, it's connected directly to the uh, transformer, and also it's got fuses and things, so I'm thinking that's what that is. And nestled down in here is what we now know as a Sony compact disc player. So let's see if we can get that out as well. All right, let's go ahead. There's three screws. There's like three feet, one here and then two on the front side. And that's pretty well loose. It's hanging up. The lip is all right, not so graceful, but I got it out. <laughs> so here is the CD player itself. Daryl Hall and John Oates. So we got Hall and Oates. Something Sky, Men Gold Sky. Familiar with the band, not that album. Uh, this is surprisingly heavy. Let's look on the bottom side here. So we've got some different motors here to power different things like the drawer mechanism and the actual player itself. That would be a motor that we see quite a bit. Yeah, I mean, it's simple stuff. And the CD being in there makes me think that we couldn't even get the CD working when we were testing it. Now we've really got to the bottom of this thing. I'm not going to take off the power module, but we can look at it. So we've got another Toshiba chip back there and some monster capacitors. So, so far we've seen Toshiba and Sony. I'm, I'm thinking that the unit was primarily made by Toshiba with uh, Sony components. Not sure about the tape mechanism. Let's look at that next. Okay. And here is the tape mechanism. This is a dual well deck, but like I said earlier, it is really a single motor doing all of the work. This is all punched metal. And not 100% sure. It could be an original Tanishin. Belts still intact. A little bit loose. Yeah, they can do an amazing thing with, uh, you know, basically flywheels, gears, and belts from a single motor. Think about that. You could be playing in one, recording to the other, doing it all. The cap stands, the take-up reels, all of it from one motor. That's pretty amazing engineering. Here's a look at the front. We do have some plastic parts there. And look at the heads. Even the cheap stuff back in this day, at least stereo was a standard on both heads. Stereo and stereo. Permanent erase head so it would come up and into contact when you were making a recording. That way, when it was uh, just playing a tape, you wouldn't accidentally demagnetize your, your cassette there. Plastic parts, a lot of metal still. Even with the entry-level stuff it's got, some good heft to it. Look at this piece right here. It's this piece, it's like a brush that literally brushes the belt as it goes by. You can see the motor, it's the same manufacturer as we saw on the uh, uh, compact disc player there. And that is a good motor. That's essentially the same type that would power the turntable as well. Yeah, nothing to indicate this is bad. You'll notice there's no circuit board that's attached to this piece. This is purely a mechanical extension of the cassette functionality. And these are the buttons to put things into motion. There's the play button. Puts up that whole stamped out piece of metal with the, with the head attached to play your cassette. I don't see any indication of who made this component. I'm guessing this is probably Tanishin. If anybody knows, be a Westlife, I got my eye on you. I have a feeling that <laughs> probably the first person is going to be able to say, yeah, it's Tanishin. Not 100% sure. Original Tanishin, not bad. Entry level, but not bad. Well, my friends, we've decimated this thing. But it was for a good cause. We learned something. Oh, there's one more board back down there, too. I won't worry about that. It's let's see what it is. Okay, so it's another display. It's a CD player display. So that's probably the logic for the CD player and the display panel. But pretty much, we've seen everything. We've torn it apart. We know it's probably a joint venture between Casio, Toshiba, and Sony with an off-the-shelf Tanishin dual-well tape mechanism. That would be my guess. 
that's the answer to the question. Who makes this thing? I love finding that kind of stuff out. I hope you thought it was interesting too. One more point of interest before we go though. As I was taking out one of these boards, I noticed this stamped up here, property of Orient Power. Orient Power, does anybody know who that was? Is that perhaps the third party company that assembled this from parts from Toshiba and Sony? We may never know. All right, my friends, and that is going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up, tell your friends, and most importantly, make sure you're subscribed, thumbs up, all that stuff so you don't miss our lives. And again, invite you to check out our final Vlogmas episode. Tomorrow, you're not gonna wanna miss that. But my friends, that's gonna do it for today. So happy record, honey. We'll see you next time.